just remind you of our prayer. Um, we'll be gathered, get, gathered together again tomorrow night for prayer. And uh, we have a card that's for our emphasis, that tells of our emphasis. Uh, we're going to um, continue to pray, pray for uh, salvation, going to pray for families. We're going to focus on families and areas of ministry within the church. And so I just want to remind you that. Uh, we, we, we're, we start at 6.30. We're here roughly an hour. If you got to come straight from work, it's okay. If you come in a little late, it's okay. It's no, there's no issue, but come if you can. If you're unable to come, uh, again, uh, take the card anyway. That way we can pray for these things throughout the week. But uh, just give us some time during the week. Set aside some time that you pray also. We're uniting with other churches across our district. We're expecting testimonies to come because of this. Amen. Yes. Yes. We're expecting the church to be strengthened through this. So yeah. I just want to remind you that we had a great time this past Monday night. And so I uh, just want you to be a part of, it, a part of it if it's possible. Also, we're thankful for our young people. And uh, this week, Miss Destiny was installed as her commander, the commander over her ROTC unit there in yes. uh, Vernon High School. Let's give her a <laughs> young So that's a big deal and so she's uh, looking to have a career later in the military and so uh, she's off to a great start so we're proud of our young people amen we have a, a video it's a testimony of a young man that came from a lot of dysfunction but um, um, have received that redemption that we sing about yes. and it's just too good we uh, looked at it yesterday evening and I said this is just too good not to uh, show so uh, if the guys want to run that guys are gal we got Jasmine back there also so I grew up in a really bad way. There was a lot of violence in my household. My dad was an alcoholic and it was really dysfunctional. So I grew up with him beating my mom. I grew up with him beating me and my aunts. And when my mom and dad split up in 1986-87, then I was left with my brothers and sisters with my dad. And so I was the brunt of his destruction. But then there came a time when I turned to the streets because I had no other way. And I started running the streets, I started using drugs, I started getting involved in gangs, and that overtook my life. As I got older and started getting in trouble and getting incarcerated, that's when even the court system were saying that I was a lost cause, there was no hope for me, and that basically I was a menace to society. And I spent the majority of my 20s in the California prison system, and then when I was released at the age of 30, I came to Idaho to stay with my little sister. And at that time, I got my very first apartment. And everything was going okay, but I started drinking. And even though I wasn't using drugs, I justified it, saying that it's just alcohol. Well, I found myself at a party I should have never been at. And what ended up happening was a man showed up that was a rival gang member. And I did the only thing I knew how and assaulted him with a weapon. And then the crazy part about it is God was actually working in my life without me knowing it, because the next day, I called my mom, told her what I did, and went and turned myself in, you know? And so then what ended up happening was when I got into the prison system, I got in more trouble. And so I got put into solitary confinement for three years. While I was in solitary confinement, I actually cried out that I wanted to change, but I didn't know how. I didn't cry out to God, I just said I want to change. And God heard that cry, because when I got let back into general population, Ten days later, another inmate introduced me to the Bible and I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And that was the decision that changed my life forever. You see, my new life in Christ is a life of peace and love and joy. And it's all because of Jesus. Before Christ, I was a really violent man. I was a drug addict. I was a thief and I had no regards for human life. But since giving my life to Jesus, that he's softened my heart in such a way that I love everybody. For instance, with my dad, before if he were to say something to push my buttons, I would turn to violence. But now when he pushes my buttons, I just pray. And now my dad's the one always calling me saying, can you pray for this? Can you pray for that? So my God's brought my dad a really long way. And we actually have a relationship for the first time ever. There's so many things in my life that wouldn't be possible today without God. I was able to go to school and get my journeyman's license for plumbing. God also opened up the door for me to buy a house. You know, I've never lived in a house before. And God did bless me with a wife. 
and God allowed my beautiful wife to move to my house with me. He's put ministries and asked me to oversee ministries. That's crazy to ask me to oversee anything. <laughs> but with Jesus, it's possible. Amen. A lot of times I have to ask God, you know, is this real? Because of all the beautiful things that he's doing in my life. And it's only because I surrender to him. And see, it doesn't matter where you've been in life, what you've done in life. If Jesus can set someone like me free, he can set you free too. But it all starts with believing in Jesus and understanding that the same resurrection power that rose him from the dead can raise you from whatever you're going through and set you free and make you a new creation. If there's hope for me, there's hope for anybody. Maybe here this morning you you say, well, I've never a killer or I've never been in prison, but when we're lost, we're lost, right? Lost is lost, without God, without hope. And and uh, whenever we come to salvation, it's not a it's not a a, a self help deal. It's a new creature. We heard yes. the testimony of a new yes. creature, a new set of values. Amen. I'm thankful for God's amazing grace this morning. Amen. Last week we talked about remembering where we came from. Remember what God has done. Remember how we started out in our journey with Jesus Christ. And there are things that we need to continue to remember. God, uh, the ch God told the children of Israel, when you cross that Jordan, I want you to put a pile of stones there so you yes. won't forget what happened there. That right. way when the kids ask, you can tell them what happened. Right. There's things we need to remember. And likewise, there's things that we need to forget. There's things that we need to turn loose of. There's, yeah. If we're not careful, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have baggage in our life that is we weren't meant, just like a, in the verse in the song, we were not meant to, we're carrying things that we were not meant to That's carry. Right. There's things that we have to turn loose. And as we know in our households, if you've been in, a, in, a, in the same place for very long and you a move, you realize how much baggage you have. You have unnecessary things that you got to get rid of. And so it is with our spiritual life that there are times when we carry things that we do not need to carry. And so there are things that we need to forget, turn loose of. And so if you have your Bibles or your, or your advice, we're going to be in Philippians chapter 3. We'll also have it on the screen. Philippians chapter 3, and we'll be starting in verse 12. The Apostle Paul speaking to the people of, Philipp of uh, Philippi. Verse 12, not that I have already attained or I am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that which Jesus Christ has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind yeah. and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I press toward the goal. We press forward. And so there are things he said, I, this one thing I do, that I leave those things, but forgetting those things which are behind. There are this is there are things necessary for the Apostle Paul to forget, to leave behind. Yes. And one of those things is we forget our old values. And what do you mean by that? In order for us to understand what Paul is speaking of, we need to go to the verses ahead of that. And Paul was referring to those things that um, he had that were valuable to him at one time. And the list of those are in verses five and six of the same chapter. And he, uh, Paul described himself as a Hebrew of Hebrews. Uh, he was the ultimate Jew. Those in his culture would look at Paul. He was the ultimate Jew. Uh, he was circumcised on the eighth day according to tradition. As we read, Jesus also, when the eighth day came, that was their custom. That was their tradition. That they, the, the, the boys were circumcised. He was of the tribe of Judah. He knew his heritage. He knew where he came from. And he became a Pharisee. Now, when we think of a Pharisee, we think of how Jesus addressed the Pharisees. We think of the hypocrite because that's what they had become. They were all show that inwardly they were, uh, as Jesus described them, dead man falling inside. Uh, but, they, but they put on a show. They were the religious people of the world. But in that culture, uh, in, in Paul, he was a Jew. He was looked up to because... Uh, if any was, anyone was going to go to heaven in the Jewish culture, it was the Pharisee because they kept the letter of the law. And so this is what Paul was, a Pharisee. 
he said under the, the greatest teachers of the time. Concerning Paul's commitment as a Pharisee, he persecuted followers of Jesus. Why? Because they referred to him as a, pre a pretender. It was heresy. He was preaching things that were not right. And so he, uh, he, was, uh, he was persecuted. He wanted to stomp that out. Concerning the law, he was, a, he was blameless. His position, his title, his work against the Christians were all important to Paul. But Paul had an encounter with a resurrected Savior. He was on his way to Damascus to throw people who were serving Christ in the way, what they called the way, what we are today of the way, the way of Jesus Christ. He was going there to throw them in prison, but he had an encounter with a resurrected yes, Jesus yes. Christ, just as the testimony of the young man. Two different backgrounds. Paul was a religious man, but he was lost. Yes. This young man uh, did all the things that we associate with being lost. Of violence and drugs and th uh, being a thief and disrespectful and abuse and so forth and so forth but they were both lost yes. as a result of the encounter with Jesus Christ Paul's life was radically changed yes. just as this young man's life was radically yes. changed where there was dysfunction going on where there was no uh, any no, no uh, sign of unity within a family uh, we find that now he testified of unity with his dad in other words he's settled he's at peace He's enjoying, the, he's enjoying the joy and the peace that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so uh, Paul had that encounter with a resurrected Christ. Uh, Paul, before Christ, looked at himself or others and he considered himself righteous. In his eyes, he was righteous. Why? Because he was a Pharisee. Because he had kept the letter of the law. He was by, uh, by, uh, uh, by birth a Jew. By his own measuring stick, he was a good man. By this, by maybe by his own measuring stick, he figured he was doing the best he could. But whenever he came in contact with Jesus Christ, he realized he saw himself as he was. When he saw the glorified Christ, when we see the glorified Christ, when we worship the glorified Christ, when we read of the glorified Christ, the resurrected Christ, we see ourselves as we are, and that's we are sinners, that yes. we need a Savior. Yes. Amen? Amen? And that's what happened to Paul, a righteous man, a, a, a man that in the community he was looked up to. He was he was. Uh, they, were showed, they showed reverence to him, but we find that he saw himself as he was. He was truly sinful. So Paul forgot or gave up his works for righteousness. In other words, he was working hard for that righteousness, for the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He knew that that righteousness came from the person of Jesus Christ. And we see that attitude of self-righteousness alive and well today, don't we? Yeah. We have people that are measured by their selves by their own measuring stick, by their own set of values. Or maybe they're comparing their self to other people that they come in contact with. And in their mind, they're a good person. They've never uh, uh, killed anybody. They're, they're, they're fair. They, they t uh, treat their wife right and so forth. And that's all good. But the righteousness that we need comes from Jesus yeah. Christ. We need a new a set of values and Paul had to lay aside that set of values that he had whenever he and he did that whenever he encountered a risen a risen Jesus Christ amen, amen. Jesus was labeled as a, a, a pretender this very one that he persecuted he came in count, contact with it's interesting that the young man uh, just cried out but yet God visited him there yes. he just cried out he knew he needed to change but God by his mercy and his grace, he visited him there and began a move in his life. It's interesting that Paul uh, was going to, on his journey to persecute Christians. He was not calling on the name of the Lord. But Jesus Christ, by his mercy and by his grace, interrupted his travel yeah. and revealed himself. Isn't that yes. what happens to us? Yes. Amen. Yes. God uh, puts his conviction on us. God shows us, hey, there's a different way. He reveals himself. Yes. In other words, salvation is instigated by our Savior. Yes. Amen. Yes. We can say, think of well of ourselves, but without him uh, coming into our life, we would still be lost. Amen. Yes. Amen. So uh, we, we're living in a time when people are using their own measuring stick for righteousness. But we need to remember the one that counts, the only one that matters is God's. The only way to measure up is through the righteousness of Jesus Christ by grace, just as yes. we sung about. Grace, God's grace, God's yes. amazing grace. Yes. Amen. What was so profitable for Paul, things that were profitable for him uh, at that time, his position, his heritage, uh, who he was, 
That was all profitable, but, proud, but the time came when he encountered Jesus Christ, they became trash compared to what he had in Christ. That position no longer meant anything. That heritage, even though that was something to be proud of, no longer meant, that was not so valuable anymore. The fact that he sat under the feet of the greatest teachers of the day was not a big deal whenever he come in contact with the Jesus Christ. And how would this happen? He, he, wanted to, he, he found out that Christ, what Christ had done for him, and he wanted uh, to experience all that Christ had for him. Whenever you read that, he says, on down before the verses that we had uh, read, in other words, he wanted to know Christ. He wanted to know him intimately. In other words, that was the knowledge of Jesus Christ was greater than all the accomplishments of Paul's life beforehand, and they were many. Paul was willing to forget his old values to know Christ, to know him intimately. And so the question is, what about you? Are you willing to give up your own value system for a greater knowledge of Jesus Christ? Those uh, who ultimately live for things are never truly happy. If we just live for the material part of this world or the titles of this world or what this world can offer, we're not going to, uh, to uh, be ultimately happy. But our true, our true source of joy, as we found in the life of Paul, comes from knowing a resurrected Christ. Yes. And you know what? He was able, uh, Paul was willing to know Christ in spite of it costing, knowing that there was a cost there. He yes. knew that Jesus Christ uh, ultimately gave his life. And he knew that knowing Christ might, uh, might involve suffering. It might involve uh, 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 persecution. But you know what? Paul was willing. The knowledge of Jesus Christ was great, uh, greater than any threat that yeah. anybody could put on yeah. him. Amen? Yeah. Does that make sense this morning? Yeah. In other words, Jesus, uh, Paul was willing to be uh, persecuted for his belief. In yeah. other words, that knowledge of Jesus Christ, to know him and to know him intimately. And we're not just talking about a head knowledge, but a knowledge that it touches our heart, right. a knowledge that uh, changes our life. Yeah. That's what Paul was interested in. In other words, all those things that were valuable to him at one time, he counted them as trash, right. as rubbish. And you know what? Uh, whenever we uh, seek Jesus with our own, uh, with our whole heart, the same is with us, that we'll no longer uh, have the same value system. We'll put our value on that person, Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. 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 Yes. In order to go forward, we got to forget our old value system. In order to go forward, we're going to have to uh, forget our old wounds. The Bible tells us, and uh, again, we read it again in Philippians 3 and 13, portion of that scripture. It says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. I'm not there yet, but there's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And you say, Brother Chris, how is it possible to forget? How is it possible to forget those things that's happened to me? How can we erase the sin and the mistakes of the past? How do we break the power of the past how we break the power of the fast is by living for the future. In other words, he said, I press forward. Yes. You know what? Paul was persecuted by his own countrymen. Yes. He was backstabbed. He was betrayed. But yet he said, I'm going to forget the past and I'm going to go forward. Yes. And you know what? That's a great hindrance to us. We talk about a, a baggage that we can carry. We can carry wounds of the past. In other words, instead of letting them heal, we continue to pick at them. We continue to stir at them. We continue to bring them fresh again in our mind. And there are wounds in the past that we need to forget. Yeah. Lay them aside and go forward. Our future is greater than the wounds of our past. Yes. Amen. I want to get yeah. past the wounds of my past. Amen. Yes. Get Amen. past those of my past. Amen. I've got a few scars from working out on the farm. I've got some places I've been cut. I've got places I've been kicked by a cow, and I can still feel it. I've got scars from working out in, in the, in the uh, line of work that I do, but thankfully they're just that. They're scars. They remind me of what happened. And in the spiritual uh, realm of things, yeah, there's been a few times I felt like I got whacked in the face. There's been a few times where I've got a few scars, but you know what? We've got to let bygones be bygones. Amen. We've got to go forward. It happens. You know what? But to, to know Jesus, to know him for who he is is far greater than those things that happen. Amen. Right. Those things that cause a scar, those things that cause us pain, uh, pain emotionally. And that's what Paul said. I'm forgetting those things which are behind. I'm pressing forward. Yes. And so how do I do that? To break the power of the past by living for the future. Yes. We got a great day today. We got a great future ahead of us. God has, God has great things for us and I yes. want to experience them to the full. Amen. 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 We cannot change the past, but we can change the meaning of the past. 
How do you, what are you talking about, Brother Chris? We mentioned a little bit of this last week of Joseph. Uh, Joseph was a person that God had revealed to him what life will be in the future. He dreamed. He knew there was a, a, a future for him. But yet along that journey, he was betrayed by his brothers, stuck down in a pit. They first said, let's kill him. Another one said, no, we need a little spending money for Saturday night. Let's sell him. Doesn't have a better idea? And so that's what they did. They sold him. And they sold him to Paul, eventually landed in the house of Potiphar for a foreigner. And the Bible says he served him and he served him well. He minded his own business. He brought profit to that house. But the wife had an eye on Joseph. And, you know, he, he's in a foreign country. Who would know? But you know what? Joseph stayed true to his God. That was greater to him than the temptation that he was facing. And the Bible says he fleed. Whenever she took a move, she got out of there. That's, a, that's the way we got to avoid sexual uh, temptation. We got to get out of there. And he did. And he was falsely accused. And because of that, he could have been put to death. But instead, he was there in prison. In a prison. And you know, uh, I've not been in prison, but it's not a pleasant place. And I know uh, for sure during that time in history, whenever uh, Joseph was in uh, prison, it was not a pleasant place either. I'm sure bread and water was, you were glad to get that, right? And there he was, uh, uh, he, uh, he gave interpretation of the dream of the two guys that would, or one guy that would stand before Pharaoh. He said, just remember me. That's all I ask. And the time came to remember him and they forgot him. You know what? He could have been bitter. He could have been resentful. He could have been cynical. But you know what? He continued to faith, uh, to pursue yeah. God. He continued to, to know that God had a purpose in all that. Yeah. And so the day came whenever a Pharaoh had the dream. And, they, and the guy finally remembered about Joseph and brought him up. Now he's number two in command. He went from being a prisoner. He went from being uh, uh, having uh, difficult things in his life. Now he's sitting next to Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world. And you know what? It wasn't long that his brothers came knocking, and they're in need. It would have been a perfect time to, uh, to, extend, to extend revenge, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But you know what? Joseph didn't do that. He showed kindness to his brothers. In other words, that difficulty that he saw, faced, that difficulty that he went through, he saw that as God using it to bring him to the place that he was. In other words, he didn't allow bitterness to take over him. He didn't allow revenge to take over him. He saw his difficulty through the lens of God, and that's not always easy to see. Many times we do not see it while we're going through, but in retrospect. In other words, as we look back, we see how God used that uh, those series of events or whatever it might be to, to give us strength, to, to br help us bring us to the point where we are now. Does that make sense? Yes. Everything is for a purpose in God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Even our dark nights, even though our, even our difficulties, even whenever it seems like everything is against us. Uh, <clears throat> we listened to the song by Laura Story uh, the other day. And it's such a powerful song talking about uh, uh, how God uses those lonely nights to show his blessings. Uh, sometimes his blessings, when we're wanting sunshine, he sends rain. Sometimes we're wanting one thing, but you know what? God in his mercy, God in his grace, God in his justice knows what he's doing. And so there are things that happen to us that cause us pain, that set us back, that cause us discouragement. But we need to see them through the lens which God intended, that he's working it for his good. Amen. Yes. He's got a purpose in it to bring us to where we are today. So there are things we need to let go and say, you know what? God, I do not understand it, but I'm giving it to you. With your grace, I'm giving it to you. I'm leaving it behind because I want to press forward. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we need to have the same attitude as Joseph. The devil meant it for, the devil meant it for harm. But God meant it yes, for good. Yes. And that's something we need to remind ourselves from time to time. The devil means us for harm, but God meant it for good. You may be going through a, 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 an event or a series of things, and you, you just don't know what to do with it. You know, uh, you have to remember, I'm not going to become bitter. I'm going to become better because of this. I'm not going to allow this bitterness to come into my heart. I'm not, I'm not, Brother Chris is striving not to die a bitter old man, amen? In order for that to happen, I got to, I got to get that bitterness out of my life. I got to let it go and say, Lord, I'm not going to get bitter over this. I'm going to get better. I'm going to get deeper in you. I'm going to have a greater knowledge of who you are. I'm going to experience the grace that you have for me, yes. amen? Paul had many things in his past that could have weighed him down, but they become inspirations to go forward. Notice what the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12 through 17. 
I thank Jesus Christ our Lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy. I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Again, a religious man, as opposed to our young man that we just saw, but they were both lost. They were both uh, needed that salvation, that grace. Verse 14, it says, And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Jesus Christ. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So if you're here this morning, you say, There's, Brother Chris, you don't know the sin I committed. I don't have to do it, but I know that it's not deeper than what the grace of God can pick you out of. Amen. Amen. Yeah. In other words, it's not greater than the grace of Jesus Christ, Amen. no matter what the sin is. Right. Just as the Apostle Paul, just as the young man that we uh, heard the testimony of, God's grace is sufficient. Yes, Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. However, for this reason, I obtain mercy, that in me first, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. He, he testified of the pit that God brought him out of. He testified of the sin that he was in, that God delivered him from, and, yes. and, 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 and turned, him away, turned him around from being a persecutor of the church to a propagator of the church, a missionary that went here and there, all over that known world will say to tell others of Jesus Christ. And you know what? There are too many Christians that are shackled by regrets of the past. Right. They're not going forward because of the weight that they, holds them down. Because they have failed at some point in time, they don't see that God can ever use them again. Can I remind you this morning? He can. Yes, his he grace is, is sufficient. Yes, is. With his grace, he can redeem that failure and put you back on track. Yes, and you can is. travel in places that you could not dream of. He'll use yes. that as a stepping stone to use you in a greater way than your mind can comprehend. Amen. 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 This young man that we just heard testimony of. Couldn't imagine himself standing before others speaking of the grace of God. Couldn't even imagine himself living in an old, his own house being married. But that day came because of God's grace. Right. And I'm reminding you this morning, in order to step forward, and in order to obtain what God has given us, we got to there's some things we got to turn loose of. Amen. Yeah. We got to we got to uh, turn loose of that uh, of, of those uh, of that regret. We got to turn loose of that weight that's holding us back. Those things that are behind must be set aside for things which are before. There are too many Christians who are not pressing forward because of old wounds. Instead of walking in forgiveness, they will not let go of old insults and offenses. We've all lived long enough we've been insulted. We've all lived long enough we have been offended. i got news for you. It will continue to happen. But I'm thankful that God's grace is sufficient. Yes. We can, as Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When they was beating the life out of him. And he had power to do something otherwise. When they were pulling his beard. When they were beating him to the point where the Bible says you could not... Uh, recognize him as a man. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And there are times when we also have to do the same thing. Yes. For, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they yes. do. We need to lay it aside, forget it, and move forward. Amen? Amen. Yes. Because God's grace is sufficient. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hebrews 12 and verse 14 and 15. It says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. In other words, we need to strive to be like our Savior, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble by this many become defiled. What is it saying there this morning? It's telling us that there are many people that used to attend a household of believers. There's many people.
people that used to be in some form of, of ministry, but they're staying at home because they allow a, a, a root of bitterness to grow. It's not that grace was not sufficient. Grace was sufficient. They just did not apply grace to that wound. And rather they carried it to their own. And because of that, they're offended. Because of that, they're, uh, they're, they're, you, the bitterness is growing in their life. Instead of extending grace, they're, they're concentrating on that wound, that old wound, and continue playing over and over and over in their mind. I don't know about you, but I want to break that circuit of bad thoughts. Amen. And that's yeah. hey, we're able to do that by the grace of God. Yes, we're able to do that by looking forward to what yes. God has wants us to us to step into this coming year. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. Instead of letting go and forgetting it, they cultivate it. That to speaking of that bitterness until their hearts become defiled because of bitterness. Notice what the last part of that scripture said. By this, many become defiled. And we don't want to be a part of that number, do we? We want to go forward in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to go forward by His grace for His kingdom. Grace does not fail. We just fail to depend on the grace of God to forgive. His grace is sufficient to help us forgive. Rather than living a life of nurturing old wounds, let us move forward to the prize that is ahead. That is ahead. And what is that prize? Notice what the Bible tells in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21. And the Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Yes. And you know what? We can walk in that joy today. We yes. can walk in that joy of knowing that we are forgiven. We can walk in that joy knowing that we're not going to let old wounds uh, hold us back. We're not, we're not going to let old value systems uh, hold us back. You know, there are times... Uh, you know, and, uh, obviously I've had a few birthdays and my, my, it seems like my forget or remember uh, works better than my remember. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. 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 My, my uncle used to call it. <laughs> <laughs> my uncle used to call it a half, of course, he lived up north. Half a track in the snow. In other words, you made a half a track and you had to come out. I find myself doing the same thing. But then there's things I need to forget. I wish I could forget. I need to work harder at forgetting. Amen. And so that I can move forward. So those thoughts just don't go round and round and round and steal the joy of the day. Amen? Amen. 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 That's possible this morning. That's possible. In order for us to go forward, we've got to turn loose of that old value system. Paul had to turn loose of that old value system. What was so important to him, being honored in those places that he went, because he was a, not just a Pharisee, but a Pharisee of Pharisees. Because he could, he could trace, he knew the, who he was. He knew where his heritage was. But you know what? All that became is he put it rubbish, trash, whenever he encountered a resurrected Jesus yeah. Christ. And he said he wanted to know him. He wanted to know him in a greater way. That's my desire this morning, is to know him in a greater way. And there are times, there are times, in, that, in our journey to know him in a better way, in that walk with him, there are times when he uses suffering to seal a portion of him that we've never seen before. There's time when he uses dark nights to show himself in a way that we never, otherwise would never see. There are times when we've got to go through those difficult times that our spirit, our spiritual man grows stronger during those times. It's, it's like push-ups in the spirit. We gain strength through those dark nights. Sometimes we have to go through those times to know what we really believe. Year, a few years ago, I said some stuff within myself. Didn't really tell Tammy. Just stuff. I just kind of said to myself, "Well, this is what I will. Do. This is what I would do if this were to happen. This is what I believe in." And unbeknownst to me, a series of events came and it really put those thoughts to test. I realized those were my own values. Those weren't God's. That's just something I had thought of. I didn't line up with God's word. So that storm, that difficulty got me back on that solid ground, that person of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. Amen. So we've got we to gotta turn loose of those old facts, something that we've come up with, not something God's come up with, something we've come up with. Yeah. And we've got to turn loose of those old wounds. Let them heal up. Remember, yeah, I remember what happened, but by the grace of God, I've got past that. Yes. I'm not going to let that dominate today, what happened yesterday. I know that's not an easy thing, but we can do that through the grace of God when we yeah. depend on Him. Whenever we, whenever we step into Him, when we press, He said, I press toward the prize. When we step into Him, whenever we step against the flesh, our own wants, our own thoughts, when we, contrary to what our flesh is telling us, when we step into Him, that's when we go forward. Amen? Yes. Amen. 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 Amen.
this great place to sing. Just, just search yourself. Turn loose 